Hi guys, I'm Joe Klimczewski, founder of The Diet Doc here with Dr. Corey Probst. We're going to be talking about vegetables in today's <laughs> episode of Life Mastery Podcast. Of the veggies. So, um, yeah, another one that you're going to probably kind of just take the wheel and go in whatever direction you want because I'm just not a foodie. But I, I do have, once, once you've kind of introduced the topic, yeah. Corey, I do have a couple of vegetable stories I can throw in there. <laughs> Well, I mean, your pea one is always a really good one, so you might want to, but I'm sure you probably have more. Yeah, I, I love the topic of veggies because I love veggies. P-E-A, right? P. Yeah. Not P-E-E. -E. Right. Okay, just I, now you, <laughs> e even I was a little yeah, confused there for a minute. I'm like, I don't know if, I'm, are we talking P -P -E, the asparagus but, and urine or... I didn't know what you were talking about. Well, there is that. Lots of there is that. Yeah. There is that. <laughs> and beets. Beets have an interesting impact, too. I had a friend who ate some beets and actually thought she was coming apart from the inside. But <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> scary stuff, folks. We have a list of disclaimers on this podcast. <laughs> right? Uh, so... <clears throat> yeah, veggies. I think that a lot of people have a lot of different experiences with veggies. And, you know, my growing up, veggies were always a part of our meals. Um, you know, when you look at the, the kind of my plate recommendations, how vegetables, vegetables actually, sh actually should be filling up about half of your plate. Um, between fruits and veggies, and then a quarter protein and a, and a quarter starch. But uh, our plates were always full with about a quarter vegetables. And I remember, you know, my mom, yeah, I just, I just figured this out, Joe. So I have this thing about warming up my salad so the lettuce gets like a little wilty mm. um, because it's like, it's like the harshness of romaine for example and like when spinach isn't soft um there's just something about that texture that's not attractive to me and so i'll put my salads in the microwave for 30 to 60 seconds um and i think i figured out why besides the whole texture thing why i really just love salads more that way well my mom used to make taco salad all the time mm. so you know, lettuce in a big bowl, and then she would, she'd have the hot ground beef and, and kidney beans, that whole mixture, where she'd just dump it on top. So that was like wilty lettuce. <laughs> so Got I'm it. still figuring out why I like the things I do at 40 <laughs> years old. <laughs> Some people do yoga every week. Corey goes into this Freudian cocoon once a week to figure out her life. Right. This is what I think about when I'm meditating. Taco salad. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was always a part of my diet growing up. But it wasn't necessarily fresh vegetables that we had because we were operating on a pretty slim budget. And uh, I remember you know, we ate a lot of canned stuff. And I don't think my mom at the time was, you know, particularly concerned about. I mean, she was in the medical field too about salt and the amount of sodium in those things. I still love canned spinach. I still buy it because I ate so much of that. Maybe that's why I'm so muscular. <laughs> <laughs> I still eat canned spinach. Um, but I'm saying all this because we all have such varied histories in terms of how we were brought up with food and vegetables. A lot of us grew up on farms and probably grew our own vegetables and just got very used to that fresh almost organic taste and you know Ben when we have veggies and we had a small garden for a little while he would just pick them straight out of the ground and eat them and he has said like I like the taste of dirt um so I don't I don't but <laughs> to each his own right I think there's a tv show about that reality <laughs> show he may, maybe is missing some some vital minerals or something in his nutrition currently but anyway, this question came from someone who reads our newsletter, and she was asking, 
how can I get more veggies in my diet? I know they're important. I know I need the vitamins and the minerals and the antioxidants and the fiber and the things that come from vegetables, but I just don't like them. And I have quite a few clients who have said that to me, like, how can I incorporate more when I just don't like them? And um, I think a lot of it has to do with how they've been served to us, how they've been prepared or cooked and um, oil or butter or none of those and maybe just raw or maybe they're slimy. So, it, I mean, the texture has a lot to do with it. You know, the other thing too I'm thinking about, Joe, is not everyone needs to consume and shouldn't necessarily consume a lot of vegetables in their diet based on um, maybe some conditions that they have. And I know you have some experience there that, that we can touch on. Yeah, so I, I do have a theory about people who don't like vegetables, but, uh, you know, first of all, we have a newsletter. We have a newsletter. Okay, you, you, you must be sending that out because I know I'm not a, a part of that. So Everyone, we have a newsletter. It's great. it's great to know. <laughs> we have a newsletter. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we have a newsletter and people respond to it. And we would love for everyone to subscribe to the newsletter. You know, I, um, I could be better about sending it out more regularly, Joe, but it does go out at least once a month. And I put in there, you know, the most popular podcasts that we've had in case anyone has missed them. And then any other promotions or new programming that we're launching and getting out there so everyone is aware. But yes, we do. That is good to know. I'm, yeah. I'm, hap I'm happy when things are happening like this in our, in our company. <laughs> but uh, so, so here's my theory. People who say I don't like vegetables, I think that is <clears throat> a self-deception. I, I don't think that can be true. I could say the same thing, but it's really just that I don't take the time. I'm lazy. I don't I don't cultivate that habit or something, but mm -hmm. here's a, here's an interesting little, little story from this weekend. My, my wife and oldest daughter now bulk cook on the weekend, which is an yeah. amazing throwback because when my wife and I first got married and I was in college and I was working three, four, five jobs at a time, she was working full time. Mm -hmm. Even though we didn't have kids, that's just still what we had to do to survive. If we didn't bulk cook on the weekends, we weren't going to eat all week. Right. So it's really fun to see them doing that again. And this weekend, I went in the refrigerator and there's this massive bowl of vegetables, I mean, fresh carrots and broccoli and snap peas and green mm. beans. And they had already been steamed. So all I had to do mm. was warm them up with my, my chicken. And I asked Tracy, I said, wow, this, like, what did you do to these? They taste amazing. She said, I added salt. <laughs> and I, no, like what, what seasoning? What did you do? Did you yeah. saute? Like I just added salt. But the flavor yeah. of all of them steamed together, mm -hmm. and like you said, the texture, you know, mm -hmm. they, were, they were fresh, but then, I mean, mm. I would never go mm. cut up four different kinds of vegetables, clean them, wash them, prepare them, steam them, and then sit down and eat, but they were ready ahead <laughs> of time, and, yeah. and so I ate that I ate them every day for the next three or four days. My mouth is watering, Joe. But, I mean, <laughs> we just talked about this. I do this every morning for breakfast, I know. lunch, and dinner. Um, and, and I just get excited because it is so enjoyable. Does it take a little time? Because I do it. I, I don't necessarily do all that, all of the prep ahead of time. Well, you need to get a wife. I need, I do. That's I a know. really great idea. I, yeah. Uh, that, that helps out. I, I'm going to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's California. I'm sure it's fine. They're probably just sitting right outside my door right now. We There's another TV show about that as well. <laughs> there is. <laughs> Find okay, so, me a wife. That, that would be a good Netflix original series. So I, I, do, I do like what you said about, you know, some people can't have too much because that is a problem I deal with as a nutrition consultant, especially on the performance side of our company. A lot of people are dieting very extreme and, uh, you know, they think, well, volumetrically, I can get more veggies, you know, to make up for my carbs, more bang for my buck. And so they're piling in vegetables or some kind of fibrous carb every meal and I just see a lot of, of pretty severe IBD, people who 
go from just just thinking that pain and distension and and flatulence and, and constipation and diarrhea is normal to people who end up with with colitis and ulcerative colitis and all kinds of you know permanent dysfunction. So there is a limit for some people. I, I would say on a continuum, very few people can just eat as much vegetable fiber as they want. Even then, there are probably some symptoms they wish they didn't have. Mm -hmm. But there's a there's a fine line between having enough and too much when it comes to this and, and different sources, uh, you know, the way you prepare them when, when you cook them, that makes them easier to digest. So a lot of things we won't cover today, but, but keep in the back of your mind that there, there are some boundaries to stay within. I've overdone it, Joe. I have, I mean, I've gotten gout from eating a head of cauliflower every day. Um, it's, <laughs> you can overdo it. <laughs> I'm you're gonna, to you're gonna, you're gonna die from eating too much vegetables someday. You're gonna find a way. For eating too much broccoli, yeah. um, and that was cooked. I haven't had any issues in a really long time, but um, you know, different circumstances going on in my life. Also, I've often wondered though if if I didn't cook all my vegetables because I I actually don't like broccoli is one of my favorite veggies, but I won't touch it with a ten foot pole if it's raw. I don't mm. like it at all it's so bitter to me mm -hmm. um, but that brings us back to like how can we incorporate more and prepare it differently and enjoy it S spices too salt goes a really long way and we don't have to douse it in salt but seasoning seasoning can be a really big deal and i'm, I'm big on seasonings but um you know i think that most people like soup <laughs> we don't necessarily have to eat like bushels and uh, bushels of veggies like you did. You sat down and you had four different types of whole vegetables in front of you. You know, why don't we make veggie based soups like puree and blend up the vegetables and have that be a base for a soup with maybe beans or some sort of protein in it. Um, I know you, Joe, you used to do some sort of veggie fruit smoothie. I'm not big on liquid meals. Mm -hmm. I've, I've never liked doing that just because I, um, they, I feel like they go right through me and I never necessarily feel satisfied, but you did that and you were incorporating some veggies into that. What'd that look like? Yeah, it was just, um, you know, having in the summer, in the morning for mm -hmm. breakfast, I'll have a protein smoothie with frozen fruit, protein powder. And I know it's just a good way to hide a little extra vegetable in there. So again, I'm conscious of, of the quantity, right. but if you can throw in, you know, a few leaves of spinach or something else, you know, you always talk about color mm -hmm. and I'm conscious mm -hmm. of the different vitamins and nutrients that represents. So there are just some things I don't necessarily get on a daily basis, but you know, you can throw in a little stalk of celery in that protein mm. smoothie and never even taste it and mm -hmm. these are just things I would never get otherwise so just right. a just way to get some variety over time yeah you're making me think of vegetables that don't necessarily have a really strong flavor to them that you can throw in there and you're not just gonna you're not just gonna taste the broccoli or just taste the cauliflower for example spinach yeah, is you you don't taste it at all and and it's not a lot it's it's the fact that you're getting some consistently frequently mm -hmm. over time yeah. Yeah. So speaking of cauliflower, uh, a lot of people have taken to buying riced cauliflower. I mean, you can certainly do it yourself by throwing it in a blender or a food processor, but you can buy it already. Like Costco has bags of riced cauliflower and you can replace your regular white or brown rice with cauliflower. Does it is the texture a little bit different? Yeah, it's a little bit different, but cook that up in some broth and you're getting a little bit of that sodium for the flavor. And there's a lot of things, different things that you can make with it too. People are making cauliflower crust with it. Um, I've done that as well. I just, I throw it in stir fries. Um, I make that as, I use it as a base for my omelets. <laughs> so I get, this, that in a pan and, you know, egg whites and other veggies in there, but that's a great way to add some vegetables to your nutrition. The other thing you can do with cauliflower is just take a look at, look at, take a look at the starches that you're currently eating uh, throughout the day, like 
a lot of people love mashed potatoes, for example. Replace half of the potato with cauliflower. You're probably not even going to notice. Um, another thing people can do, like I'm, I, like I love avocado. Um, lots of people will make guacamole. Replace half of the avocado with peas. When you blend them up, they're super creamy like an avocado will be, but you're not getting any of the fat. You're getting, and that's healthy fat, it's still fat though, but you're getting a lot of the fiber and the antioxidants from the peas. Um, I made a veggie lasagna last night and actually never, I, I, I just, I, I was feeling a bit creative and I'm like, how many colors can I fit in this baking dish? <laughs> So I didn't want to use any noodles. So I baked strips of eggplant for like seven minutes. And then I, I used that as the uh, eggplant strips as the noodles. Um, but then I used cabbage leaves also for more layers. And then I used shredded carrots and onion and mushrooms. This would more be for the person who actually enjoys vegetables, but if you want a really good bolus of vegetables for a meal, that was kind of fun. But on the topic of noodles, think about using zucchini or yellow squash or sweet potatoes or carrots to make noodles out of. You can get one of those spiralizers or I just have this cheap plastic thing that you put the um, veggie into the end of and you turn it. It's called a veggetti. It's like the worst name on the face of the planet. <laughs> like, uh, who thought of that? <laughs> um, but let's put that in the show notes. <laughs> I use the veggetti. <laughs> so uh, it, it, as much as I would love to stay right on that topic, um, I just wanted to comment on the fact that your lasagna creation actually sounds amazing. I mean, that's, that's a great way to, to eliminate a lot of starch. And, uh, it, you know, I, I can, I can visualize and, and, you know, conceptualize what that would taste like. And, and I think it would be great. It's, you know, I've used uh, spaghetti squash and mm -hmm. butternut squash and things like that as mm -hmm. other starch replacements. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, sometimes there's just really no difference except you're replacing, you know, plain starch with with a fibrous carb yeah and i almost did that joe i almost cooked up a butternut squash and um used that as one of the layers to get kind of a like a creamier texture um decided not to didn't want to have to take the time to cook the the squash beforehand but it was really good and it, it, the measure is does ben like it <laughs> <laughs> he the made guy it eats dirt. Stuff, though, How so could he not like it? A loaf of bread on the side. <laughs> just add a teaspoon of dirt and he'll be fine. All right, just sprinkle. That's like the garnish. <laughs> um, yeah, so veggie noodles are a big thing. You can also buy those in the store. If it's, if it's a prep thing that you feel like is getting in the way, it just takes too much time. Every grocery store these days has a section where you can buy the prepackaged cauliflower rice, the veggie noodles, the butternut squash that looks like um, the crinkle fries. Just bake those up. You, you, it's like you're eating French fries. And so, gosh, there are so many different I, more ideas that I could share, Joe, but um, I... I think that we can approach this as a fun thing as opposed to it becoming like this arduous task, like the veggies got to get them in somehow. No. How about we look at how we can because it's fun and how much better are we going to feel if we are just in small ways incorporating more color? I think that's the kind of the best way to go about it is how can I sprinkle in a little bit more color today? Yeah, and I, I come back to what you just said with convenience and habit. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really don't think somebody could say, I will not eat vegetables because I don't like them. Yeah. It's, if, if somebody served them to you every single day, couple meals a day, you would never say, oh, I don't like them. It's yeah. just a matter of creating the habit and, and the convenience and taking the time. 
One more thing, Joe. I don't know. Do you like hummus? Um, I, I do, but that is definitely one of those things that I'm going to eat pretty sparingly just because of the GI impact. Okay, so because most people are just eating hummus that is made from like chickpeas or beans, and so we're concerned about gas and just the super high fiber, um, there's a brand called Lantana that you know, I'm not being sponsored by Lantana. I just really appreciate <laughs> Lantana because they have so many different options and less fat than a lot of hummus does. The, the fat in hummus just comes from the sesame seed paste, which is, I mean, that's actually a healthy fat. But if we are looking at reducing our overall consumption of fat, this is a good brand to look at. But they've got beet hummus, edamame hummus, mm. cauliflower hummus, cucumber hummus, Carrot hummus, yellow lentil hummus, black bean hummus, three pepper hummus. Wow. I mean, yeah. It, so for those of you who want, who love flavor, which I do, I don't particularly like bland food, uh, hummus can be a great way to add that in, incorporate more vegetables into your diet and fiber and antioxidants. And I like to use hummus sometimes as like my dressing for a salad or a topper for my omelet, for example. And it is a matter of getting creative. All right, Corey. Well, this is definitely your wheelhouse. So uh, <laughs> if anybody has any questions about how to eat more vegetable, Corey is the person contact to, uh, to contact. Yes. <laughs> and uh, guys, thanks for liking and sharing and even subscribing. We had a, a pretty fun, controversial a uh, podcast on artificial sweeteners yesterday, did a poll ahead of time, let everybody know when it was going to be released. But we record these typically, produce them, and then uh, post them the next day. So you will always be a day ahead if you subscribe. So thanks for that, and we will catch you next time. Thanks, guys.